Hey everyone, Tony from TN3D Studios and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at a very interesting Sketch Plus update. They've added six new tools into an extension that already has 35 tools. And I think this extension is a complete game changer for architects and interior designers. To download Sketch Plus, be sure to check the links in the description. This is an affiliate link, so thanks in advance for the support. So this feature allows you to select and move objects inside nested group. With it, you can resize objects like furniture, walls, and windows much faster. So for example, if I wanted to stretch this entire rail, I would have to go inside the group and stretch each object individually. And as you can see, this can take some time if you have to do this with different groups in your model. So Deep Stretch is a solution to this workflow as you can bypass all of these editing steps and move all the objects with one selection. Now a quick tip here is to be careful how you make your selection because it can pick up everything within the selection box including things behind the faces that you can't see. So I recommend grouping objects that make sense to be paired up as I've done so. So now I can go inside the object and isolate it for editing. And now I can activate Deep Stretch, make my selection and stretch all of these objects together. So this is definitely a time saver and will allow you to edit your models much faster. Is you might run into some issues. For example, I'm going to activate deep stretch, make my selection, and I'll attempt to stretch all of this together. And as you can see, stretching this can cause an auto fold. And SketchUp makes these weird line connections in the attempt to keep your faces flat. Now, if you ever run into this, there's a couple of ways you can fix it. First, you make your selection. And before you make any movement, just make one single click. And from here, without moving, you actually want to lock on the axis that you're moving to. So for example, this is moving on the right axis. So I'll press the right arrow key. And now I can move this without causing an auto fold. Another way is for you to click actually on an empty space, you can just click and you can move and you can even change axis and you can see that there is no auto fold being generated. Next we have a scattering distribution feature which allows you to spread and scatter objects onto a surface and, and this is very useful because it automates object placement in SketchUp. So let me show you how this works. I got a couple of trees and a shrub that I want to add to the surface. And the first thing you want to make sure is that all of these components or these trees are centered on their respected axis. So for example, this is the axis is on center and this should be the case with every component you're going to scatter. Select your surface and activate sprinkle on surface. And now you can click on whatever object you want to add. And as you hover, you will see this nice little preview that corresponds to the density of the components on that surface. And right here, you can also press the up and down key to increase and decrease the density. For example, we're at 100% and we can take that down as by pressing the down key. So you can go as low and as high as you want. So I'm going to keep that at 100%. And I'm going to click on my first component to confirm that placement. Without deactivating the feature, you can click on additional components to distribute on the surface. And once again, press up and down to increase and decrease the density. So it's a pretty cool extension and I really like how simple it is. It just randomizes the object placement and you don't have to do any guesswork. So without deactivating my tool, I can continue to click on my component to scatter more on my surface. Now let's do the same for this surface over here. Make my selection, activate sprinkle, and I'm going to select this first tree. Now something useful that you can do here is press control. That's because the control key allows you to align the components with the surface normals. So this is when they are straight and this follows the vertical orientation of the landscape. So when I confirm my selection, the trees are shown to be a little bit slanted. 
A very quick tip here, you can use existing Sketch Plus features to randomly rotate and scale all of these scattered components. For example, let's select all instances of the shrub and I can use this to randomly rotate and use random scale to randomize my components. As you can see, my minimum and max value is 0.8 and 1.2. And when I and when I click, you can see that it randomly scaled all of these shrubs. So very useful feature to have. The next feature in this update is Walk Plus. This provides you with a first person camera controls so you can freely move around your project. So let's activate Walk Plus and immediately it moves to a five foot eye height. And now I, I can use the arrow keys to walk around by model. Modifiers, you can always refer to the instructor tabs. For example, I can use the plus and minus to adjust the walking speed. So I'm going to make this faster. And I can also click to look around. So as you can imagine, this feels pretty much like a video game. Show the client how the project is looking as well as giving them a walkthrough tour. One thing I really appreciate about this feature is that it actually stops you from walking through wall. And there's a modifying key for you to turn that on and off. So if I press alt, I'll be able to walk through those walls that I couldn't earlier. Okay, so the next feature in this update is favorite views. This allows you to save and manage views across different SketchUp models. Now, this is very important for maintaining consistent views when working on different SketchUp models on the same project. So let's suppose this is model number one and I have two views here. So here we have favorite views. We get this dialog box that allows you to save, load, update, rename, and delete. And right now we have no views, even though we have two views set in our SketchUp scene. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this as an actual view and I'm going to save it and I'll just name this exterior ISO. And we'll do one more for demonstration. We'll take this as another view, right? We'll save this and we'll call this exterior one. So when I expand my list, I have two views saved, exterior one and exterior ISO. And now we can go over to another model. And here we have model number two. So there aren't any views set for this model. So because we have two different models of the same project, you can take advantage of favorite views to load the scenes from the other model here. Now, right away, you can see that exterior one and exterior ISO are here. So I can select exterior one and hit load. And I can select exterior ISO and load that as well. So as you can see, it's an extremely useful feature. So next we have batch save. This feature lets you save selected models or your entire model to different versions of SketchUp. As you know, in SketchUp 2025, this is something that has been discontinued. So you can no longer save to let's say SketchUp 2024 and downwards. So what this allows you to do is, for example, select this model. You can go to batch save and with this selected, you can save this down to SketchUp 2021 and under. And if you had nothing selected, you're able to save your entire model to one of these previous versions. Now, this could be extremely useful. Suppose you want to just save this desk or actually this entire set. You can select the chair as well as the lamp, select the batch save, and now you can save this to different versions of SketchUp. So this one is for those of you that are still working with previous versions of SketchUp and want to transfer models that are in SketchUp 2025 to work in those versions. So the next feature on this update is a very unique one called Spin View. This allows you to spin the view on targeted axes, and it is very useful for making window selections at unusual angles. For example, if I want to select the sloped edge on this part of my model, I can go inside, I can go inside, activate Spin the View, and basically try to control my view by spinning it so this object becomes flat and easier to select. Another thing you might notice is that it is a lot easier to spin when you're further away from the center. For example, it is hard to control if you spin this closer to the center. As you can see, it is very fast. 
versus if you are further away from the center it makes it a lot easier to spin around and gives you more control another thing i really appreciate is that you can actually create transitions between two scenes with spin view for example i can spin this right at a complete 180 save it as a scene move a little bit closer and spin this back to normal view save it as another scene and create this sort of a spinning animation inside of sketchup and that's going to be all for this update video with these new features sketch plus has reached 40 plus tools so let me know in the comment sections if you want a video covering all the other features as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video